Hello, good morning and welcome to Kiev's railway station. In this video I'm going to be taking a train to Odessa and showing you exactly what it's like. It's a bit rainy right now. You can see here it's really busy considering the fact it's actually 5.30 right now. And our train's leaving around 6.30. Xander and I are going to grab some food, get on the train, chill. It's about 10 hours so I'll let you know a little bit more information once we're on there. Here's the train making our way to carriage 3 right now. Leaves at 6.34 and arrives in Odessa 4.46. We've only got about five minutes before it leaves. Xander and I stuff some breakfast down real quick before uh, getting here. Not too many people on the platform and the train doesn't look very full at all either. Some nice neoclassical Soviet architecture at the station. Let's get it checked now. Stepping onto the train now. Spasiba. 6.35 a.m. and the train is already moving. Let me show you my cabin in a bit more detail. So it's pretty nice as you can see. Xander and I have the cabin to ourselves. <laughs> we both have the top bunks, but that means we can sit on the bottom. We kind of knew there wouldn't be too many people, so getting the top bunk means that we basically have the whole thing reserved, I guess, in a way. So this was 752 Grevena. You can see the view of Kiev as we go by right now. The seats are really nice, actually. You can see it's all brand new. Up here, plenty of space. So for your 10 hour trip to Odessa, this is what you can get. Comes with linens, of course. Duvet, pillow, not too bad. It even tells you whether the toilet is occupied or not. That's pretty handy. Let me give you a quick show of the toilets in case you're interested. There's the toilet, has a seat of course. So we're around one hour away now from Odessa. We've been on the train for around nine and a bit hours. It's felt like quite a long journey, I would say. Although we have had the comfort of being able to lie down. I've just been doing some editing on my laptop, although the power socket here isn't working. And I tried moving to another cabin to charge my laptop. They're not working either. The power comes on for like a few seconds and then it goes off again and doesn't come back for like five minutes. Comes on for a few seconds and goes off. So, pretty sure it's not my equipment. Anyway, we have been struggling with food. There hasn't been any food. We were rushing this morning because the train was at 6.30 a.m. So we just, you know, had a quick bite from McDonald's, some egg muffins, and then came on the train with no snacks, which is very stupid of us because it's a 10 hour journey. And so we expected there would be a food carriage or at least a trolley lady coming down at some point asking us. Little did we know, we're the only people on the carriage. There's not even some staff to ask if there's any food. I had to go two carriages down to find a staff member, someone who works on the train. And I said, is there any food anywhere I can get something to eat? And he said, no. And I said, no carriage, no trolley lady, nothing. He's like, no, no, just blunt. Didn't elaborate any more than that. So our only possibility was to, perhaps like they do in India and Pakistan and Bangladesh, you hang out the train when you arrive at a station and hopefully you just throw some money to someone and they'll give you some food. That's what I've done in India before, but not here in Ukraine. Let me show you as I walk down here, there's no one working here. This has been empty for pretty much the entire nine hours. 
there was someone there for the first maybe 20 minutes of the journey and then I think quickly the guy realized that Xander and I were the only people on this train and probably thought it's not worth his time to stay there for whatever reason. Like I said, every single other cabin is empty. Absolutely nobody else apart from us. Give us a wave, Xander. <laughs> there you go. See, empty. And this one, empty all the way down. Can see some of the scenery outside. Ukraine is a very green country, lots of bushes and trees. Something I've noticed on the journey, which has been good. I don't want to come across like I'm complaining about anything, just being honest. The journey hasn't been the greatest, not because of the facilities. The facilities here are pretty good. The only thing lacking is the ability to charge my things. The socket's not really working, the power's not working. No food for quite a long time, which again is probably our fault. We should have brought some snacks, but no option for food. Additionally, there's no Wi-Fi. That would be probably a bit much to ask on a train like this, maybe. Um, in some countries you'd get Wi-Fi, some you don't. I totally understand there's no Wi-Fi. So, on top of the fact there's no Wi-Fi, what's made it difficult is the lack of service in the area. I haven't been able to get 3G most of the time, I've had no service. So, it's been a bit twiddling thumbs, not being able to eat, charge. The only thing we can do is sleep and go to the toilet and use whatever power we have right now. So, that's kind of been it. <laughs> It's not been very fun to show you. Um, really, there hasn't been much going on. The carriage is completely empty. But there you go, this has been our experience taking the train from Kiev to Odessa in Ukraine. So we've just arrived in Odessa, greeted by some classical music. Opera is very famous here. The station looks pretty nice. We're absolutely starving, haven't had food. So it's uh, first on the priority list. Hey, what's up? Before I wrap up this video, I want to talk about one more thing, which is the Neo Almighty backpack made by Neo Smart. Everyone who's wondering what backpack I use, well, this is it. It's very, very clever. It has many cool features and things I absolutely love. So let me just quickly talk you through. And if you're interested to get it yourself, there will be a link in the description and you can get your hands on this very cool backpack if you are a traveler like myself or you like the look of it. So right off the bat, one of the coolest things about this bag is that you can open it exactly like a suitcase with different sections to store your things as you can see here. So you don't have to fumble to get to the thing that's at the bottom of your bag. There is a laptop holder here and a few other places for phones and tablets and anything else that you want to store in there. The outside, is weather resistant it's designed for durability which makes it very useful too and another feature i really love is this usb port here you can plug it to your power bank inside your bag and charge as you're walking along doing your day-to-day -day activities as you can see here too there is also a strong metal handle which means that you don't wear and tear at your regular handle which you can find on many other backpacks over time the fibers start to pull a lot i really love the front straps here they're super comfortable there's also the ability to strap yourself in there's even a whistle on this and one thing that's really cool is this little card section here where you can actually store maybe your metro card your debit cards even if you're worried about being pickpocketed they'll be much safer at the front of your bag the bag is resistant to high temperatures, so you can keep your liquids cool in the water bottle section. Go and grab this bag by clicking the link in the description and you will reap the cool benefits that I've been getting from this. I only promote things that I've tried and tested and I actually think are worth showing to you guys. And yeah, I'm definitely giving this bag 
a big thumbs up. So go ahead and get it if you're interested. And that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one in Ukraine. Peace.